Hey, ladies, this is um, Mary Clark, and um, everyone can see this. Today, we have Deborah um, from um, Women's Painting and Decoration um, continue to talk to us about um, painting and decoration tips. I just want to show you um, what Deborah, in, in all the nice pictures, all the decoration that Deborah have done, you really inspiring because only a simple paint and brush and some tips we can make your house so lovely and lift up your mood, isn't it, Deborah? Yes, definitely. Uh, but yeah. having having the right tools really helps you, though. Yes, exactly. So, um, so I I want you guys show you look up look at her website and also look at she have a lovely Instagram page and then um we can get some tips and idea, isn't it, um, Deborah? Yes, uh, the Instagram page you'll actually benefit a lot more from. Uh, we do daily videos, uh, pictures of our work, before and afters. Uh, so if you guys have an Instagram uh, page, uh, I would recommend following our page, uh, at Women Painting. Um, it is on my front page here. On the yeah. front. Uh, it shows the link to our website and our Instagram page. Um, and there you'll get... Uh, you'll get to see us daily, like some of the work we do, some of the tips we give, um, and some of the work before and after, like I said. Yep. Without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic to Deborah, and she's going to talk today about how to repair um, wall, a drywall. Yep. I'm going to be giving you guys uh, two uh, examples of how to repair two different situations. Um, I do have my main video that Mary will be showing you uh, soon, uh, but first I'm going to talk about two questions that uh, two people had. Uh, one of them was about how to fix a corner of drywall where two walls meet up. That was her question there. So in my video where I show all the, um, all the examples of plaster work, it'll pretty much show you how to do it. But I found a little clip uh, just to focus more on the corner. Uh, drywall uh, uh, of a guy giving an example of how he did it. Um, the only thing I would not listen to is the part where he wipes something with a sponge. There's no need for that. Everything else uh, is pretty much how we would do it. Okay. So I don't know if you want to maybe play the video and then we can talk about it after, Mary. Yes. Um, did you? Can you guys see? This is what Saru sent me an email to for uh, I forward to that um uh, Deborah she have a uh, this problem on her wall can everyone see it yeah Deborah can you see it yeah and this happens a lot uh in high traffic areas like hallways uh anywhere really uh where there's two corners like that a lot of banging will happen sometimes it's tight space maybe you came through with furniture uh even sometimes after movers come in that happens right and then you don't know what to do with the corner so yes, I'll show you guys uh, how to how to resolve that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to show the video now. Hold on. Mm. Just give me two seconds, ladies. That's it. Uh, video, video, video. Yep. Can you guys see it? Owners are easily fixed. By following a few simple guidelines, you can create a finish to be proud of. Nicks in the outside corner of a smooth plaster wall are easily repaired. Spread a drop cloth to protect your room. Remove any loose plaster from around the hole. Vacuum away the plaster dust and wipe the area down with a damp sponge. And then use a small putty knife and joint compound or spackle to fill the damaged area. Work from one side and then the other. When dry, sand with 120 grit sandpaper, vacuuming the dust as you go. Next, dampen the area with a wet sponge and apply compound to any remaining imperfections, starting at the corner and feathering out to the wall. Once dry, touch up with 200 grit sandpaper and you're ready to prime and paint the repair to match your existing walls.
Yeah. Okay, so I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, is it okay to go ahead, Mary? Yeah, it is. I'll just stop the video so Deborah can walk you through that. Problem. So the only thing I would do differently is the wet sponge. There's no need for a wet sponge, okay? Um, and you'll notice the sponges that I use for sanding. I mentioned it on my first video on what, what to buy for sanding. That sponge that I recommend that you'll also see in the video, that's what, I'll that's what you could use for sanding. So once you apply your first coat of plaster, if you've done it a little thicker than you like, you could always sand it a little bit and then put your second coat on. Then you let that dry and you sand it nicely after that with the sponge, okay? Sometimes when you do it with sandpaper like that and you're not too experienced, um, it, could, it could look not so smooth, as smooth as you want it to look. Uh, so I'd recommend just sticking to the sponge because you can really control how you're, how you're sanding it, okay? Uh, the vacuuming, like always, uh, you'll see in my video when we're done everything, just make sure you always vacuum everything. Um, and then you would prime that and paint that, that, those two walls, just like you would a regular room, okay? Hope that's helpful. Yeah, I'm just, um, Deborah, I'm, I didn't put your presentation up. So this is what sure. Deborah was talking about. Yes, exactly. So. There was another question about the uh, the wall after uh, wallpaper was removed, uh, the damage that was caused on the wall. I don't know if you want to show that image because I can talk about that one as well. Yep, I'm going to show them now. Hold on, just two seconds, ladies. Um, share. I get it all in hand. Here you are. That's what Sarut asked about. Um, she. She talked about she ripped off some wallpaper, uh, you know, want to remove some wallpaper and that's left behind. And yeah. Deborah, can you just walk them yeah. through? So we do this a lot. Uh, we just did one, a master bedroom where we had to remove all the wallpaper from the ceiling, the walls, everywhere. Okay. Uh, so a lot of times the wetness of uh, wetting down the paper uh, will cause the drywall, like the actual paint, to peel off the wall a little bit. Some areas have glue because of however it was installed. Sometimes there's glue, sometimes there's paste. And that sometimes comes out with the paper when you're removing wallpaper, correct? So it's a thin layer in this situation. It's not that bad. We've seen situations where it's a lot worse, where there's like a lot of chunks of glue on it. And all you really do is you, you always have to use that five-in-one tool that I mentioned, the scraper to scrape off the excess glue. You have to remove all the big stuff with the scraper. And then you have to pole sand the whole wall with that block sander that I mentioned that you attach to the pole. I remember you guys, I showed you on the first video. Um, and when I show you my actual video doing all the work, um, you're gonna see an example of that, okay? So in this situation, when you see little bits of paper, um, you should try to get as much off as you can when you're removing the wallpaper. Sometimes the little bits are left over. You can wet that better and remove as much as you can because then you have less sanding to do, okay? If you leave a lot of bits of paper on it, the more sanding you're gonna have to do and you can't leave any of that paper behind, okay? So scrape it all off, any glue, any paper, if it's not coming off, wet it a bit with the, with the wet cloth, scrape it again, it will come right off, okay? And then once all of that's prepared, you pole sand the whole wall and it's got to be dry. You gotta make sure the wall's completely dry before you start sanding it. Sometimes it takes an hour or two for the wall to get completely dry because you're gonna be wetting the wall quite a bit when you're removing paper, right? So it's gonna be soaked. Sometimes I'll turn on some fans, some area fans just to help dry it quicker. If you don't have that, that's okay, just, just wait, okay? The once you do all the pole sanding, vacuum everything, because you're gonna have little bits all over your baseboards, all over your windows. Dust brush it off, vacuum everything. Once that's done, it's there's a lot of steps, okay? Once the pole sanding and the block sanding is done and vacuuming, you then have to prime all of the walls. You can't put paint on those walls straight on, okay? You've gotta prime it. 
We don't usually use primer before regular painting if the wall color is light enough. We don't need to prime, um, depending on the state of the wall, of course. But in this situation, you have to prime it, okay? Once again, let it all dry nicely. Hole sand everything again, just in case you missed something. And you always gotta prime, you always gotta sand after primer anyway. Once all of the sanding is done, you then have to take a light to the wall because everything will be white. You won't find the deficiencies so easily. So what I usually do, especially if I have my staff with me and I, want, I don't want anybody to miss any spots, I'll go around with a piece of chalk, like literally your kid's chalk or anybody's chalk. Go around with a piece of chalk with color to it. It could be yellow, it could be pink, it doesn't matter. And just circle all the deficiencies that you find. And then that way you'll know what to look for with your plaster. Okay, so then you go and you fix all the little deficiencies with the, with the plaster twice, like I taught you guys, and I'll show you that on, the, on my video, where we do everything twice, nice and thin. Once everything's patched twice and dried, you then sand all those spots, and then you have to spot prime all the spots again with primer. So it does take quite a bit of work, but it's possible, ladies, you can do it. Once all the priming and the spot primes are done, you pull sand again, all the walls again, and then you're ready for paint, two coats of paint, okay? But all the preparation, all the sanding, all the sealing of the primer, it's all been resolved. You know there's no glue coming through, you know there's no patches coming through and shining through the paint, and then you can start from scratch. Okay, I hope, that, I hope that's helpful. It's a lot more details <laughs> than the first video for sure. I think it's a little bit need a bit more patient and you know steps to go through it. Um, but um, we can show you the video. Should we show show them the video, uh, Deborah? Yeah, let's show them the main video because no, yeah, let them show you the main video so then you can just you can completely understand what Deborah have just um mentioned. So I'm going to start showing you guys the main video. And this is a video that Rafi and I uh, demonstrated ourselves, okay, in our garage. Hi, this is Deborah and Rafi from Women Painting and Decorating. We're going to be doing some video clips for you guys today, uh, demonstrating uh, how to uh, give you an example on repairing walls and general repairs. So for an example, we're going to be looking at uh, how to patch regular deficiencies like wall dings, holes and screw pops. You can see them here. Nail holes, how to remove them and put them, fix a deficiency properly. We're going to be looking at also how to remove nails and how to repair the hole behind it properly for best results for after you're starting to do your painting. Uh, we're going to be looking at cracks or tears. Also, um, Last but not least, the, the more complex one, which is the drywall repair tape. This one here, see how it's a bigger hole? We're gonna be doing some drywall tape on it just to give you a, a very basic example on how, how we would fix that, okay? Okay, so Rafi is gonna demonstrate how she would start preparing the wall for all the kinds of patchwork she's gonna be doing. So you notice how on this one, there was a bit of flaking of paper bulging out. She's making sure that all the loose stuff is gone. You notice how we use the five in one for everything, just like we mentioned on the, on the first video for the um, general tools and paint. Remember I talk about how the five in one is our best friend. So it literally prepares everything for you from ripping open a cut like that, and you see how there's little hairs all over, a little fuzz. She's getting rid of all that fuzz because that would all come through the, the, the plaster and then afterwards show up in your paint. And you don't want that, okay? You see how she's using the back of the scraper? Can you just show that one more time? To put in the deficiency, what happens is a lot of times there will be a bulge on that hole and you want the, the hole to look like it's inside the wall. Okay, so then there's the nail. This one is, I think, pretty loose, so she'll just use the scraper to get it right there. You see how there's a tiny bulge there? Watch how she puts that back in with the back of her scraper. See how the dent now looks like it's inside? 
That's what you want, okay, for the patch. Okay, so screwdriver. She's just finding the right bit so that she can put in a, a screw a screw pop. We get these a lot on stairways and staircases and stuff. So the screw is coming out of the drywall. You don't want the patch over that because it will show. So she's just putting it inside the drywall. So there's a bit of an indent, okay? Just like that one. That's ready for paint. This one here, she's just scraping all the little stuff again. I use the back of the scraper a lot because that helps bring in the paper, as you can see. It's okay to use your fingers when you need to. And you don't need a manicure like Rafi. <laughs> Okay, so that fuzz needs to be sanded down. Always feel with your hand to make sure you're okay with it. If you're not, keep going. Sand again. And this is one of the sponges we use. We're going to be showing you all that in the first video, but we'll just give you an example of one of the ones we use. We like to use that for walls, trim, everything really. So that's inset enough for her to put in her drywall tape. You always make sure all your surfaces are smooth before you start your patchwork. All right, so these are the two putty knives, spatulas that we use to do the plaster work, okay? This is just for simple patches. We don't need uh, anything bigger for, unless we're doing bigger drywall taping or something, okay? See how she grabs that amount there? She likes to scoop it all onto one side just cause it keeps it nice and clean and from clumping up. Okay, close it up so it doesn't dry out. All right, so the key to doing patches is always keep it nice and thin do not make it thick some people go very thick but you're just going to give yourself so much more sanding to do and all we do is we do that once let it dry it depends on the compound you're using but it takes about 10 15 minutes and then we do a second thin coat once again and that thin coat will just give you a best the best result and an easier time to to sand later Use your fingers here on the spatula. See how she puts her finger on there? That just controls it from wiping it well. If you don't put your fingers, you're not cleaning it off enough. Do you want to show an example of not cleaning off, off enough with uh, no yeah. fingers? Yeah. Let's do this one. Okay. I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna use this puzzle. Okay. Okay, so show us an example of a patch that does not have your fingers uh, helping you wipe it clean. Okay, so no fingers right now. That thick. And now put your fingers on and it's nice and wiped. Okay, nice and thin. That's what you want to see. When you do the second patch, we'll show you that you just go on the reverse of how you wipe the patch down. So she applies it thick, gets it on, and then you wipe it off. Okay, so now we're going to do the drywall tape one. You buy these little rolls of drywall tape. Okay. And you just figure out what size you need. Grab an X-Acto knife. Make sure it's locked. Make a cut. Flip 
place the drywall tape right on there. Make sure it's nice and flat, nice and stuck on. It has a sticky side, so it helps. Now for patching this, it's a little trickier, okay? She's just fixing her plaster there. So she always starts, see how she started from the outside of the tape on both ends and nice and thick. She's now cleaning her putty knife nice and clean so that she can, so what she does here is she puts her weight a little bit to the right to remove from the left and a little bit to the left, she tilts her weight to the left to get rid of the right side. You just, it doesn't have to be perfect for the first coat, just do it thin because you'll probably be doing that three times. Okay, so now the first coat is done everywhere. Okay, all the types of deficiencies that we thought of that we do on a daily basis. And uh, we're gonna just let it dry. So it'll probably be 10, 15 minutes, depending on the patch. So like the drywall tape will take a little bit longer. Um, and then we'll come back and show you the second coat of patching. Thank Hello you everybody. So we're back. Uh, right now, all the patches have been dried. See how the all of the dark gray turned kind of white. In this plaster situation that we use, that's how you see it. Uh, when it's the pink stuff, the dry decks that we mentioned on our list, uh, it would go from pink to white. So it's always a little bit easier for homeowners. Uh, so Rafi's gonna be putting on the second patch now. She does a little bit of a scrape to make sure there's no little chunks of the plaster anywhere. Because it can affect your, your result. Very light. Very lightly. Then I'm just gonna apply it. Okay. And she tries to uh, apply the second coat on a bit of an angle on the opposite way that she did the first one, just because it fills in the gap a little better when you do it the opposite way. And you notice how she's doing it nice and thin again, right? Okay, it up. And so for the long one again, she applies it thick and kind of messy from beginning to end. Don't worry about making it perfect when you're applying it like that. You just apply and then remove. Two fingers on the putty knife, don't forget. Okay, and nice and clean. She likes one finger, I put two. It, it doesn't matter, as long as you have a finger on there. Okay, now the drywall tape one. Once again, more towards the right and left. A little less on the middle. Clean up your spatula nicely. And then you start to clean it up from the right, from the left. And that's it. On the, this will need a third coat. Sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the patch. Okay, we'll be back when everything's dry and ready for sanding and cleanup. Thank you. Hello everyone, we're back. All the patches are nice and dry as you can see. Okay, now Rafi is going to show you an example of how we sand them all. And you're gonna notice that she presses on the sponge a little bit, focused on the outside of the patch first for sanding it. Let her just show you an example. Outside first. A little less in the middle, in general. Check it with the other hand, make sure it's nice and smooth. On to the next. Nice and smooth. Almost no sanding. You see how nice and thin we did it from the first and second coat? See that how the sanding is a lot easier now? That's what you want. You don't want to have to sand much more than you need to. This makes your job easier. Sometimes doing a thick patch actually ends up looking bad. You have to end up fixing it. Mm, 
nice and smooth. Okay, now look here. See the drywall tape? We thought she would need three coats, but it actually looks like she might have got away with two coats. So if you do it nicely and carefully and nice and thin, you might actually get away with two coats. So let's see how it turns out. Sanding around the edges more. And remember, you're around tape, so when you get to the tape, you've got to be delicate. You can't press too hard. Nice and light. You see how she raised her fingers a bit? She's focusing more on the press on the outside of the tape and in the middle, lightly. So I'm going to try to get in there closer. Okay, now after all the actual patches individually are all done and she's checked them all, she's going to now use the pulse sand. This is what I mentioned in the first video, our tools list. This is the pole sand and we just attach a little extension pole to it, but you can use any really. Make sure it's nice and tight. And what this does is this gets rid of any lint on the walls. This gets rid of uh, any bumps, anything that you want your your walls to look smooth before painting, you get rid of with this. Okay, see how it's on a vertical? That's how you want it when you're doing the length of a wall. Okay, and I'll show her show uh, what it, if it's sideways, if it's horizontal. Okay, what happens here is sometimes when you're going up and down fast it can flip around like that and bang on these little knots right there. And then you have to patch your wall again. So you don't want that. Just keep it on a vertical and you s probably gonna go nice and slow in the beginning so you're not used to it. So just stick to that, press a little when you need to. And then you're gonna get to a point where you'll see more bumps here and there. And then you just press a little harder on them and you'll get rid of them, okay? all of the wall, top to bottom. All right, everyone. So now we're ready for the cleanup. Uh, just so you know, um, it's very important to have all dust completely gone before you start any painting. We're gonna be doing the priming next uh, in our next video and, um, and to uh, hang wallpaper. So this will be for our next slide. So for this one here, here's the cleanup. All right, so it's very important to have um, all the dust gone, like I said. Um, that way we have a fresh start for the painting, okay? Hope everybody enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. See you next. Thank you, Deborah. It was very action. You know, we can see exactly what we need to do. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, so I think um, it's very important to prepare a wall like that. Um, it's literally key to painting. A lot of people think painting is, is about the painting, but it's actually about the prep work uh, primarily. So if you have the right tools, we're not saying it has to be the best tools, but decent tools, um, it really makes your job so much easier and it's an investment for a lifetime. So you can reuse, reuse, reuse for literally your whole life because you're not gonna be painting often like we do daily. Uh, you're going to be doing it maybe every five to ten years depending on uh, the type of use <laughs> in your house right um, so prepping is is key um, and I think a lot of painters don't do it like that like they either do the patches too thick um, they don't pull sand the wall sometimes they don't even prime they just like paint right over the patches and then they show through so I, I hope that that's helpful, the video. Um, this list here is pretty much what we used uh, in this video demonstration. Uh, the five-in-one scraper, the two plastering spatulas, one 
smaller inside, one bigger. Uh, the Drydex spackling that goes on pink, that's the one we're recommending for homeowners. I feel like it's easier to work with. And once it's, once it's pink, it's wet. Once it's white, it's dry. So it's pretty straightforward. You're probably not going to be doing a crazy amount of plaster work. So a small pot of it, is, it should be enough. If you were doing a really big job where, let's say it was your whole house, dry decks can get a little bit more expensive. Um, so you could buy that, uh, the tub of the other stuff that we use from like Home Depot. Um, it's just a quick drying, uh, uh, dries in like 10, 15 minutes. And it's easy to send. You can find that in, on any shelf in Home Depot, okay? Uh, but if you're doing anything from a room or two at a time, even four rooms at a time, dry decks is enough. It'll give you a lot. Um, the mesh drywall tape that we used for the bigger holes, or sometimes you're removing, or you got a bigger hole than that, uh, you can use uh, the drywall mesh tape. Uh, the sanding sponges, pole sanding block, and the shop vacuum. I only say specifically shop vacuum, like I mentioned before, um, the dust isn't the greatest for your normal vacuums. So if you have like a good vacuum, like a Dyson or, you know, anything that's a little better like that, I would never use a vacuum like that for this dust, okay? Um, if you have just a normal kind of cheap vacuum, then it's not a big deal, just clean out your vacuum after. Uh, but I would stick to maybe a small shop vacuum. They have like a tiny one that doesn't cost much at all at Home Depot or Canadian Tire. Um, yeah, so that's the list for your tools uh, that you need uh, for doing something like that. Um, Deborah, if, um, yeah. if Sorry, just one question coming to my mind. You know, mm -hmm. the, the wall that you use the drywall tape to 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 put it on. Um, that method is it only just for a certain size of holes? When you're getting bigger, what do we do? So if it gets too big, like let's say, let's say more than a wall plate in size, okay, then you should be using. They actually sell these little wall um, metal drywall tape patches, squares, that you can buy at Home Depot. They sell them as big as maybe, let's say, six by seven, something like that. Um, and that drywall, it's a drywall tape behind the metal patch. The front of it feels like a, a almost like a thick tin foil. And that can be put on right on top of the square or a bigger hole. And you can buy that at Home Depot. They're usually like seven to ten dollars each, but sometimes that's that's an easier solution than you having to get a piece of drywall and re-drywalling that section because that's what it, that's another thing you could do is you would get a, a little stick, put it on the inside of the hole, screw it in, and then get a piece of drywall, cut it out into that square, screw it into that piece of wood again. But that gets a little more complicated. It's doable. Um, and there is videos you could do step by step, or if you guys need me to even show you a demonstration of what that would look like, we could find something. Uh, but the metal patches for normal size uh, holes, um, let's say seven by 10 even, you could find patches for that at the Home Depot. They're like aluminum patches. Uh, and then what you do is, is you patch over that, just like I taught you on the drywall tape, and you would plaster over that metal patch until you don't see it anymore. The only difference is, is you probably have to feather out the patch more so that you're, because it's a bigger square, you got to feather out the plaster work a little bit more. I hope that, that helps. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it is. Because I remember I saw um, people do it with a, um, a, like a drywall. It seems to be a big, very big job. So, so the the metal tape you can do quite big size too, so without any um uh, uh, deficiency in 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 when you paint it. Does it show through if you use? Oh, the as paint? long as you as long as you feather it out, like I said, especially if it's in the middle of a wall, it's very easy to show up if you're not feathering it out enough with the plaster work. It's almost like imagine you're putting in. Imagine putting in the square patch in the middle of your wall. If you're not plastering the wall flat and feathering it out so that it blends in with your wall flatness, it could potentially show a little bit. If it's nice and low near the baseboard, it's, it's a little harder to show up. Um, but 
yeah, like I said, it's it's no more than like six by seven, six by five, the biggest patch. Okay. Anything bigger than that, you would have to put a piece of wood, like I said, screw it into the drywall of your current wall. So imagine a painter stick, you know, those stir sticks. Mm -hmm. Done it just with that. We get a stir stick, we screw it in to both ends, and then we grab a piece of drywall, we cut it out with X-Acto knife, the square. Mm -hmm. Even if it isn't perfect, it's close enough mm -hmm. to reach the, the current wall. You're going to put drywall tape over that square, just like I showed you on that patch. But okay. the difference is, is you would just be doing a square with it. And then you plaster around that again. Oh, okay. And that's the same idea. You feather it out. You make sure the tape's not showing. It might just take you a few times. Like maybe it will take you the three, four times to do the coat, but it's doable. Yeah, I, I, I'm just thinking between you and me, we, we see whether we can find um, at some video on, 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 on YouTube and I can send it to the ladies. You know, sometimes yeah. they might have a bigger hole um, to do. And also we're going to, um, we, I'm going to look for the aluminum one that you talked yeah, about. You know what? Let me find, I'll find both videos and I'll send okay. it to you. Okay, that's great, Deborah. Thank you very much. I'm going to continue your presentation, okay? So um, let me um, put it up. So this is what we're going to talk a little about. Deborah is going to talk a little bit about common painting problem. So just a few a few problems that you can come across with painting. Uh, I'll read from here. So is the paint on your interior or exterior walls chipping, fading, or cracking? Sometimes problems will occur because it's been a long time since the walls have been painted, and they just need a fresh coat of paint. But there are situations when it's only been a few years and you're having problems. So reasons for failing paint. The primary reason for a paint job failure is improper or insufficient surface preparation. Like I said, preparation is everything, okay? Uh, many amateur painters don't place enough emphasis on preparing the area, which can result in paint not adhering properly. So the prep process will depend on what you're painting and what type of paint you're using. Some common issues with an inferior paint job and how to fix them are listed below. So number one being cracking. If your paint has cracked, it means the paint was too thin or may have dried too fast. In order to fix the problem, you'll need to remove the paint, sand down the surface and apply primer, then repaint. Painting over the cracks will just produce the same uneven surface and texture. Okay, then number two, fading. Exterior surfaces can fade from excessive sunlight the UV rays will break down and the paint's pigment. So this could also happen on your inside of your house. So let's say you're in a dining room where you have a big uh, bay window and there's a lot of sunlight. Uh, that could happen a little bit as well over the years. Uh, to fix it, you'll need to remove any chalking, then repaint the surface. You can also reduce the chance of fading by using a good quality primer and paint in the first place. And that's so, that's so true if you use a higher quality paint, like the top line Benjamin Moore, for an example, the, the Regal line or the Aura line, those types of paints uh, will fade. It will take years to fade, okay? It's a lot, it's a lot better quality. If you go and use uh, a really low contractor grade paint by Benjamin Moore or, or even uh, Delox or anything like that, a lower grade paint, it won't hold up as much in rooms like that. So maybe even in a room like that, I would recommend a higher grade paint, at least there, if you couldn't uh, afford to pay for all of the, the house to be used in that higher quality, I would at least use it in that room, okay? So number three being flaking or peeling. These paint issues are usually found on exteriors caused by dampness, mold, or rust, which deteriorates the paint. Small affected areas can be fixed by sanding the surface and repainting if the paint matches. If it's affected larger areas, the entire exterior may need to be treated and repainted. If your interior walls are flaking, the cause could also be moisture and mold. So sometimes this happens around, uh, let's say your shower, sometimes there's a little bit of drywall around and it's close to your baseboards. We see a lot of clients' homes have damage there where it's kind of moldy. 
So we have to flake all that off. Again, sand it, make sure it's dry, patch it up, sand it again, prime it all. And you like that stain block primer that I recommended for you guys to use, one of those. Um, that's how I would treat an area like that, that's flaking or peeling, okay? So what happened there, it would happen maybe uh, behind a radiator uh, or under a window, sometimes really old windows that might be causing condensation uh, for you and it would cause some mold and mildew there. Um, so before addressing the painting, you'll need to continue to have the flaking issue. Mold growth can also impact the health of the building's occupants if left untreated. So yeah, it's very serious. If you just paint right over that, you're not treating the problem, okay? Uh, blistering. Blistering occurs when excess moisture gets underneath the paint. Again, it's important to find out what's causing the moisture and get it remediated. Repainting will be pointless until you're sure the surface will stay dry. You could have a hidden water leak to impro or improper ventilation, which will create dampness. So pretty much what I just said, if, if you're just trying to hide the problem, um, it'll come right through like maybe a few weeks later, okay? The stains will come through. The stain won't even be blocked, like depending on the color you use, like let's say you used white on a stain, it will not hide it. Uh, if you did a darker color, it might, but you're still not resolving the issue. It's gonna start to bubble, it's gonna start to blister again, and the mold is still there, right? So uh, running is paint. So in, if the paint is dripping or running down the wall, you're probably using too much paint, okay? so. A lot of times when you're, not, when you're not that experienced and you're trying to do the painting yourself, you might apply too much paint, okay? So just get a feel for it. Never start at the top of the wall near the ceiling or too close to the baseboard. Do it kind of in the middle towards the top and start to feel how much you applied. And if you do put too much by accident, you still have time to uh, blend it out, okay? If you're too close to the ceiling or too close to the baseboard, it might start running right away, right? Um, you can resolve this by painting over the surface if the paint has not yet dried. If it has started to dry, wait until it's completely dry, then use a fine grain sandpaper until smooth. Wipe down the surface to remove any grit, then repaint. So like it's saying here, if you do put it on too thick and it accidentally dries like that, you have to then let it dry and sand it down because it will show, it'll show like a roller mark of really thick paint just in the middle of your wall, okay? Uh, let's see if there's more here, stains, okay. So uh, if there are stains on the surface, they may bleed through a repainting job. If you cannot completely remove the stains, use a high quality primer to seal the surface. So like the ones that I mentioned to you guys, the stain block ones, I would use those, uh, it could be even a latex one, uh, but it, depending on the stain, sometimes it needs to be the, the oil one, okay? But at least you have uh, a few brands and a few options, uh, depending on what the stain is, okay? From the first slide. Um, a gritty surface. So if the surface was not properly cleaned prior to painting, like dirt or grime and grease can affect the results. Or dirt or debris could have gotten into the paint brushes or rollers during painting. You can prevent this by thoroughly cleaning the surface before painting, straining the paint, or by using a paint guard for your paintbrush. So this can happen, let's say, in a kitchen where a lot of cooking happens, and you're doing, let's say, cabinets or even a backsplash that doesn't have tile, it's just painted. Uh, this could happen in situations like that. Sometimes those little spots of like grease or food even could come through. So just make sure um, uh, in my situation, I usually get the clients to, to do it before we come, but in your situation, you're going to have to do it yourself. Uh, clean it up, okay, soap, water, whatever cleaning products you like to use, and get most of it off. Sometimes it doesn't come off completely, uh, and then you would just have to sand it down, okay? Sand it down, it actually takes off quite a bit, and sometimes you just need to prime some of the spots if they're still showing up, okay? Um, and then poor aesthetic. So this is an overall sloppy appearance of the finished paint job. Miss spots, drips, running paint, and other issues that affect the appearance of the surface 
can all be attributed to either someone rushing the painting or using inferior products or both. Many do-it-yourselfers may think that painting is a job they can easily tackle, and I promise you it's possible. Uh, they may quickly discover that the money they are saving by doing it themselves is not worth the less than perfect results, but the, they may also try to skimp on the primer or paint or tools they use, which will affect the aesthetics as well as the longevity of the paint shop. If you use our tips and suggestions by using the tools we recommend and take the steps we take, I promise all of you the result can be a decent one. You can do it. I believe in you, ladies. Wow, Deva, I, I learned a lot. I only saw that you just put the pen up and that's it. <laughs> that's <not> that easy. <laughs> I know it looks, uh, we make it look easy because we we've been doing it for a very long time, 15 years, but uh, I promise you ladies, we started with very basic skills and we still got a good job done. And don't, the key to doing, getting it done is just caring about what you're doing, having the right equipment that you need, uh, the right paint, the right knowledge and preparing yourself and you can do it. You all can do it. Yeah, and also the more you do it, the more you learn. I mean, um, sometimes it's just uh, so easy that little recover the uh, uh, cover the the holes and things and send it down and take time. And it's practice, and it, it, it works. It really is. It'll probably be a thicker patch than you want you you know than be demonstrated, but that's okay. Things are sandable. Uh, you'll probably flip the pole sand when you're sanding the wall at first. That's okay. You fix the damage you caused. You just do it again. We flipped the, the pole sander when we first started. We did the patch a little thicker than we should have when we first started. Um, but it, you can still have a job well done. It just takes a little longer, a little more practice. Uh, you might be taping more than uh, than we do, and that's okay. You guys just take it one step at a time. Yeah, and it seems to be the more important you find out a course, particularly when ladies asked me a couple of times that um how to like find a mold and how to cover it you know how to you know um cover the mold and and repaint and things like that it takes time to get it dry and find out the problem exactly sometimes people are renting their homes and sometimes landlords don't want to resolve the issue that's the hardest part we feel uh, sometimes happens to customers um is they don't have that privilege of even having it fixed, or they try to do an easy fix, they'll send in a painter and like hide it, right? So the good thing is, uh, at least you know a little bit of basic knowledge now. So let's say you're in that situation, just make sure you scrape off, wear a mask, because we don't know the extent of the problem. Um, scrape off all the blistering stuff, all the loose stuff, uh, make sure that that's dry, so you might, you'll be able to feel it right away if it looks dry or not. Um, and obviously wash your hands, like you just have to be extra cautious. You don't know what the extent of the problem is. So making sure the wall is dry, sanding everything off after you scrape it, priming it. If you see there's stains coming through, then you need a proper stain block primer. But you might do all those steps and it's all the right steps for painting, but it doesn't mean the problem behind the wall is fixed. We don't know exactly, right? So if you're a homeowner, I would find out if there's a problem behind the wall. I would cut out that piece of drywall, check it behind the wall, make sure it's not uh, a bigger problem. Um, but sometimes you just don't have the budget to resolve the issue in that moment and you want to do a good paint job. Just follow those steps and, and you'll be okay. Well, thank you, Deborah. I definitely, and you have a lot of, it gives us a lot of insight and it could be done and we can do it and uh, just need the knowledge that you gave us really good that now that, you know, we we have that knowledge and have a tips in mind. So when we look at the problem, we saw, oh, I remember Deborah said this and and and, and we, 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 we will go handle it. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I'm happy to send the two videos so that uh, the ladies. Yeah, if, if we find something, I, mean, I will forward it to you guys. Um, at the meantime, um, if you 
if anything we want to add Deborah, if not, I will go to open up to see whether they want to do a Q&A question for you, uh, if it's okay to you. Yeah, that's your question. Yeah. Ladies, do you have any questions, burning questions to ask Deborah? Please um, raise your hands or you can put it on the chat box. But I really enjoy that Saruk um, um, sent me the problem with the corner and also with the uh, wallpaper um, she ripped off and need to repair really, really um, same time coincide with the topic we want to talk about, isn't it, Deborah? Yeah, for sure. The wallpaper removal, preparing a wall like that, it's always a little more work, even for us, like doing it for 15 years. It's always a lot more work um but just taking all those steps that's what makes all the difference if you if you don't remove the little bits of paper and uh before sanding it you're gonna have so much more sanding and we've we've had both situations where we didn't remove it all and we've had to sand a lot more so it's a lot more work so i'm just trying to help avoid that for you guys yeah Deborah, what, 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 i had a question yeah go ahead um the walls are I like uh, the picture I sent. It's a, just a small section. The walls are pretty bad, uh, so it might. Would it be better to just put wood paneling on it, or uh, just replace the uh, drywall? This is for the wallpaper removal. Uh, That's right. Set? Yeah. Uh, now they are pretty are bad. You putting wood paneling all over the the whole room. Uh, got, I was have thinking. Got a cost difference for. Yeah, like, would it be better to just uh, change the drywall or put the wood paneling on some areas and try and fix the other areas? Well, it's all a design choice, really. But let's say if you've got a quotation to do wall paneling everywhere, um, then you have to kind of compare your time and material, right? Have you got a quote for what the paneling would cost or it's just an idea you had? Uh, I haven't got to that. I've just found the wood paneling. I'm going to try and figure out the cost between the two. Yeah, if you see that there's quite a bit of a cost difference where, you know, it'll be okay to do the paneling, you can. Is it like a paneling color that you like? Because you could paint paneling if you if you didn't like the color. I just prefer white and uh, so I was just going to do white, a, a paneling and then paint it white. And it's right now like a wood, wood kind of with varnish. Does it have like a sheen to it? Uh, I haven't looked that far into it. Okay, no, only because if you if you decide to paint the paneling and the and the cost is okay, um, it does it does it could make the design look nice. Um, but you need to use a special primer for that kind of wood that has like a varnish to it. So just be careful. Um, once you find out um, and you know, you could always. Uh, send me a message or an email. I'm happy to answer that question. But you would you would have to have a specific primer for walls like that. There's one called Sticks by Benjamin Moore, and it's just a bonding primer that helps bond whatever it is you're using on the paneling. So you put a coat of that primer on called Sticks, and then you put two coats of regular paint of the color. How is that spelled? Sorry. Uh, sorry. The the name the of the primer. primer? It's called Styx. Okay. S T I X. Okay. Okay. So if you see that the paneling has like a bit of a varnish to it, like a sheen, you can't put paint on that. Okay. You could okay. always test out a little sample and see how the paint adheres to it. And if you don't feel comfortable, like it scrapes off with your nail easily, then don't risk it. Just prime everything with that primer. Thank you. No problem. Deborah, um, and another question, um, would it be different using um, a soundproof wall material? Uh, is it different, you know, the drywall that we fix with that, if it's a, 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 a more soundproof wall, is it the same uh, process applied? What, to, to put that onto the wall? 
yeah to to fix up like someone might be have a soundproof room and you 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 have a hole i i suspect that was um the wrong um the, the wrong word asking because um she was asking would that be a session for the soundproof wall material um if 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 if, if they have uh, a hole. I, think, I think she's just avoiding um doing all the preparation and the priming all the work um and wants to just cover it with paneling that's all uh, oh, okay do, yeah it is a solution if you're able to get material for cheap, um, if you have a connection or if you're able to even get material with no cost, but just pay for the labor, just see what the difference would be. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it should still cost more, but it does save you on all the work you're going to have preparing the walls, but it all depends on the timing you have, the situation, right? Um, the other question, um, Deborah, if you look at the chat box, um, uh, Nunu Chang said that um, if if the base of the uh, wall is uh, just off color, do we have to paint the whole wall? Can you just touch up? Uh, so sorry, the color is off from the base of the drywall. What does it mean by that? I, I, I guess that you mean that you, you am, if I'm wrong, Nunu, and, and if I'm wrong, I, I thought that, do you think that just Ask Deborah whether we just want to touch up the base. Do we need to repaint the whole wall? I guess. If it's the same exact paint being used, you can touch up the wall. Uh, but if it's a whole different paint, different color, it for sure will show. Sometimes even the same color will show. So let's say you had a can left over and you want to touch up with that. Depending on how many years pass, sometimes the wall could be a little dirty or it's not as fresh looking. And you put a little and you make a little spot prime on, on the mark, it can still show a little bit newer on the spot. It won't be perfect, but it's still better than it being a different color, of course. I hope it answered your question. Um, um, yeah, I, I guess as Deborah was saying that um, if you're the same paint, paint. Yeah, it seems like patched color yeah. is a bit whiter than base color. Yeah, so if it if it's pretty obvious, it almost sounds like it's a different color. Um, it all depends on if that spot will bother you or not. It probably would bother me, so I would probably spot prime the <laughs> I would probably spot prime the spot and just do that one wall and do the whole wall. So then you have to cut it, roll it. If it's very close in color, you might get away with one coat, but if it's a whole different color, you have to do two coats. Mm, wow. Wow. I didn't know that I would just for me, Deborah, I'm just going to patch the bottom and then hopefully put the furniture in front of it. <laughs> There's another solution. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, I know that we have, um, you know, we talked through a lot of stuff and Deborah did so nicely to do the video, spending a lot of time with Ralphie and doing the video and really explain a lot. But at the meantime, I just wondered when anyone, any more questions, if you do want to ask Deborah, you can always um, send me your question so I can um, send it to Deborah for, so Deborah can prepare for next week. But next week, we're going to talk about a bit of painting and wallpapering, isn't it? Yeah, uh, wallpaper. Yeah, wallpaper, and we'll get some idea how to the techniques and the material we were going to to do that. Um, but if you anywhere else, any more questions? Anything that ladies um like to ask Deborah now? But now, Deborah, the other thing is it any particularly time that you should do painting in a year? You know, um. For interior? Yeah, interior. Anytime or, you all know, like year. cold weather like this, you know. No, all year you can do interior. Just exterior here in Canada from uh, late May till late September at most. I don't like going into October. Yeah, we will talk about it in the last session about like outdoor yeah. painting. So, but no, also, okay, so indoor, you don't, do you need to have a heater to dry the paint? No, because people usually have their heat on, right? Oh, it's true. So you're usually okay if, if there's, let's say, a new build where someone doesn't have anything installed yet, 
then yeah, you need little floor heaters and stuff, but we don't come across that too much. We usually do private homes with people that are living in their homes. So they usually all have heat. So we have a fan going a lot of times throughout the whole year. We have like a, a good fan that just helps us dry things quicker. Sometimes we don't want to wait for things. Let's say we paint a room and we're going to do a second coat and we're depending on that to finish. I'll put a fan in the middle of the room and it'll dry everything up pretty quick. And then 20 minutes later, I can already recoat the room. Now, do we have to open the window when we paint? No, unless you feel the room, you can kind of feel the humidity. Like sometimes you feel there's a little bit of condensation. There's like things aren't drying. Sometimes I'll open it a little bit. Uh, but you got to get a feel for how things are drying. Sometimes the exterior walls in the cold, they will take a little longer to dry on corners, especially older homes like plaster walls. Uh, exterior walls will sometimes do that. It'll, the corners of the between two walls will be a little wet. Okay. And it just takes a little longer. So I usually just put the fan to it. That helps as well. You have to be careful with opening windows sometimes. It's letting in too much air, so you have to okay. Okay. I'd say a fan is always better than. Okay. Anything. Is it just normal fan? Normal fan, like normal. Yeah, a normal fan. It could just be those stand-up ones that most people have in their homes. Okay. We have a, like a contractor one where you can point it up, middle or down, but a regular fan like you guys, well, well, yeah, any owner has, it's fine. Great. Well, thank you ever so much, and I didn't see anyone any more question but you know um if anyone had any more questions please send it to me and we will get an answer next week but at the meantime really grateful that deborah have um take her time out of her busy schedule to talk to us and and record it um we can do a visual we can actually see what needs to be done um because as you say deborah there's so many video on youtube sometimes you don't know which one is it's good, the right thing to do and whatnot. And um, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm willing to help with that. Sometimes they could, they could, you know how that video was showing to wet the, the wall. I don't really like that he was showing that, but a lot of the videos are just too long. Um, so I'm happy to help with that, not a problem. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, uh, that is uh, um, uh, very great, grateful that, that Deborah be able to, to do that and in advance because we, we we're not having in person um sessions sometimes it's difficult to demonstrate without um looking at something um thank you very much oh it was my pleasure i hope everybody enjoyed themselves and, and well i'm sure we have i'm def i'm definitely um i i, I, I know that I am I am I I I have no knowledge although I'm an engineer by background and I just thought that you slapped the paint paint in the hope for the best <laughs> yeah that's good I'm glad I was helpful yeah. right thank you very much and hopefully everyone have a nice weekend and um we're looking forward to see that by next week and thank you everyone very much have a everyone Take okay care. bye bye